Here are my best tips for creating dynamic landscape paintings. I'm Jess Rice. I'm an art teacher and beginners are my specialty. To help your landscapes have a little bit more depth to them, make them a little bit more to scale, there's a couple easy tricks that I can show you to help with that. I've got a couple examples here I want to show you. These are just watercolors that I'm working on. Uh, one thing with landscapes is your wash layering, how you want to layer your washes. I usually start with a real light wash in the background, putting a sky in, and as I come forward, each wash is getting a little bit darker, a little bit darker as it comes forward. It gets a little bit richer as it comes forward, a little bit more detail. Each step gets a little bit more detail. Up here in my focal point has the most detail in it. So by using color, I've created a little bit of perspective in my drawing. Placing an object in the golden section of your drawing or the hot spot, cutting your paper into thirds, both vertically and horizontally, that is the golden section of your, of your painting. That's usually where I paint, place an object, something for the viewer to look at. Um, eye level line is real important in your paintings. You don't want to do it right down the middle of your paper. You want to either do it lower on the lower third or on the upper third for a lower horizon line or a higher horizon line. Here I have a low horizon line. Here I have a higher horizon line. So you want to choose either low or high, not down the middle. You don't want to split the viewer right in half trying to look at the top or the bottom. Split it up into thirds. Also, for scale, you want to have an object in there that we all kind of can relate to what the size of it is. We know that this boat or what a size a boat is, and then this all scales all of this up. Without this object in there, it's kind of hard to tell how tall all, the, all of these objects are. So try to have an object in there that we all recognize that we can scale everything else up off of. We know what a barn looks like. We know that these trees are way taller than that then. Try to place your object in the golden section again. Here I've switched to the other side. Again, the horizon line is low. I have a low horizon line. Here I've gone light in the background, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit greener, a little bit warmer here up in the front. Cooler colors, blues, light purples, all recede a little bit. Warmer colors, golds, yellows, reds come forward. So background, a little bit cooler. As I come forward, they're a little bit warmer. Again, low horizon line, nice light sky, coming darker as I come forward, getting nice and warm. Here I probably need some, a few more darks up here in the front to finish this one off. But you kind of get the idea. Slowly coming forward, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit warmer color, and then your foreground. I don't really have a focal point in this one as well, so I'll probably have to put a focal point in somewhere. I've still got lots of light in here. I can draw objects in there and create all sorts of things, even, even after I've gone this far. Again, low horizon. I have an object in here for scale. Again, using lighter colors in the background, coming forward to warmer colors in the foreground.